When you think about a testing and development environment, one of the things that comes to mind initially is if this is an entirely secondary infrastructure, you may potentially have a CapEx investment to acquire it, maintenance, patching, cooling, utility bills going up, as well as the most important variable, how do you keep this secondary environment as current as possible against production? One of the things that Veeam has innovated several years ago using the data lab capability is known as the on-demand sandbox. So on-demand sandbox is simply another use case of our virtual lab. And the virtual lab can be powered by either your backups or replicas, or if you have a supported SAN vendor, their stored snapshot technology. So in this particular video, we're going to explore inside the software how you would set up the Shure backup job or Shure replica job that would enable you to use it as an on-demand sandbox. And then in a later video, we're going to explore the same thing, but how you would do it from a stored snapshot, assuming that you have a supported SAN vendor. So let's go inside the lab and look at exactly how you set this up and leverage the on-demand sandbox. Okay, now that we're in the lab, let's take a look at exactly how you leverage the on-demand sandbox capability. In this particular example, we're launching the on-demand sandbox using the backups that we currently have on disk, but you do have other methods of launching the sandbox, such as from your replicas that you've created with Veeam and or your storage snapshots if you have a supported SAN manufacturer. So if we look at the example here, the first step to actually starting the on-demand sandbox is creating a Shure backup job. Now, if we look at this one that I've currently got running and edit the settings, you'll notice that you can name the Shure backup job whatever you want. And for my example, I like to be very descriptive and say, anytime we need a sandbox environment, let's say for a SQL DBA to do scripts, patch testing, queries, whatever the case may be, I'm actually going to call this Shure backup job the SQL Sandbox. Okay, so it's easy to identify. The next step is you need to choose which virtual lab you're going to leverage for this particular on-demand sandbox. Now again, you're not limited to a single virtual lab. You can deploy virtual labs across different clusters in different environments. So if you do have more than one, you'll see those in this drop-down menu. The next step is definitely the most crucial step, and this is where you specify an application group. Now we've created another video on exactly what an application group is, how to configure it, and you can find that video on veeam.com under the learn section. So assuming that you've already created your application group, the reason why that's so important with regards to the on-demand sandbox is that application group will control which virtual machines get turned on inside your sandbox environment. Now in this particular case, like I mentioned by the title of the job name, we've got a SQL server running inside the sandbox environment. So what good is having just a SQL server inside the virtual lab if we don't also have authentication services? So as you can see here, we've got the domain controller turning on as well as the SQL VM. Now you'll also notice that the domain controller is actually going to turn on first because it's listed first within this application group and you do have the ability to control the boot order when you're building your application group. Now, the key to leveraging the on-demand sandbox functionality is this little checkbox here at the bottom. If you do not enable this checkbox, Veeam will go through your application group, turn on the VMs, do any type of verification checks we need to do, such as a ping test and a heartbeat check to assure everything initialized properly, but when that job is done, Veeam is going to power everything down. So if you enable this checkbox, this is where you're going to be able to tell Veeam to leave everything running once it gets powered up. So after we go through our checks, which we'll still do, everything will remain online and in a state where you can use it like a sandbox environment. So everything else in this job really doesn't matter for this particular use case because what we're using this job for is to control the sandbox functionality. So there's no real point to link it to existing backup jobs. There's not really any point to do any verification on the files or do any malware scans for this particular use case. Although those features definitely come in handy for actually verifying recoverability of the VMs. But for this particular job, we're using it only as a call to action to start the sandbox environment. 
Lastly, for this particular use case, we're not going to schedule the job because we want this to simply be ready whenever we need to turn on the lab environment for our SQL DBAs in our example. You would have the ability to schedule it if you wanted to. More times than not though, when you're using a sandbox functionality, you want that to be ad hoc where you can simply start it on demand. Now, as you can see, the job is already running. So if we look inside the log window of everything that's happened, like I mentioned earlier, we're still gonna run through the verification checks. So if you look down here in the details, you'll see that we still turned on the domain controller. We still did a heartbeat and a ping and an application test to assure that it started properly. We did the exact same thing on SQL, but you'll notice that once we've done all those checks, everything is still running. So you'll see that by this little button at the bottom where it says stop session. That means the session is still running. Now, if we come over here in our vSphere environment and we zoom in on the data labs resource pool, you'll see that we've got that Linux based proxy appliance running as well as those two VMs that we have fired up inside the sure backup job. Now you'll see those listed with a long UUID after the name of the VM, and that's so you don't have any conflicts, there's no potential for UUID conflicts or anything of the like, and you'll see those VMs are fully running. Now, if you had set up static routes inside the virtual lab, you can now remote desktop directly into those VMs and run whatever test and query and script you may be looking to do. Now, once you're done using the on-demand sandbox, it does require a manual stopping of the session. And it's real simple to do. You literally go back into Veeam and you'll see, if we zoom in here on that SQL sandbox, you see the job is still running. So it's important that you shut that job down. And you can either click stop in the top ribbon bar, or if you double click on the details, you'll see that stop session button that we mentioned earlier. So when you stop the session, that will simply power down everything, discard any changes that were temporarily tracked inside that sandbox environment, and then you're back to square one. Now keep in mind, when you're running the on-demand sandbox from your backup files, it is going to lock the backup file because we are running it live. So keep that in mind when you look at job schedules and when you want to run the sandbox functionality. You certainly don't want to have those overlap where you've got a lab environment live, but it's now time to do a backup job because Veeam will shut down that on-demand sandbox infrastructure in order to assure that the backup job does complete. Because the way we look at it from a priority standpoint, it's more important to assure that you're meeting your RPO and the backup job does complete than it is to leave a sandbox environment running. So one option you may have is if you're going to do this sandbox, make sure that when you start it, you either temporarily disable your backup jobs or you're at least sure that when the scheduled job is going to run, you're gonna be done with your sandbox use case and testing. Thanks so much for watching this video on how the on-demand sandbox works. And for more videos and great content, check out veeam.com and locate the learn section.